ARP or Address Resolution Protocol is a protocol that maps IP address to a MAC address so the host can be addressed. I wanted to make a video explaining ARP because it's starting to surface a lot on different of my videos uh, that I'm actually making such as like man in the middle is surfacing when I'm talking about load balancing it's surfacing when I'm talking about security so it actually deserves uh, its own video right despite there are a lot of videos out there talking about ARP I'm gonna address ARP funny address <laughs> I'm gonna address ARP from a software engineering perspective so uh, here's here are the agenda that I'm gonna discuss there so first thing you gotta define what ARP is and then I'm gonna talk about why do we need this protocol why ARP right and how it is actually very important okay and then I'm gonna talk about a little bit of the network frame and where ARP fits right and why do we need the MAC address what's why is this MAC address thing right and then uh, finally we're gonna show an example using a GET request an HTTP GET request and how it funnels all the way down to uh, to the ARP request all right so if you're interested stay tuned if you're new here welcome my name is Hussein and this channel we discuss all sorts of software engineering by example so if you want to become a better software engineer consider subscribing and hit that bell icon so you get notified every time I upload a new video that said let's just jump into ARP all right so why would we need ARP so here's the thing right if I am browsing the web right I'm going google.com hit enter that's a git request git request translates into the layer 7 into the headers of uh, HTTP and that obviously gets pushed into some data and the data obviously I'm addressing an IP address and that's most of the time we always know the IP address how do we know the IP address from a DNS call right from google.com give me the DNS give me the IP address now I know the IP address I know where to address but guess what everything goes down into a lower layer before we hit the physical layer where's the cables or the wireless or, or or fiber optics we need to put the physical machine addresses and it's called mac right and that's lives at the layer two level every frame you look at it always has a destination mac and a, and a source mac right and when you need to these two addresses right these two addresses are not really human addressable right we don't really play with them yet every machine out there plays with those things so we need these low level address and we're going to show how it looks like right and most of the time we actually know the ip address but never the mac right we don't send messages and uh, addressing a mac address right we always say hey this is my ip address go and send the message to that IP. let's say hey get uh, 10003 uh, colon 8080 I'm, I'm making a request to a web server right and I know the IP address what happened here is that request translates to a, a frame and that frame uh, have the IP address the source and destination IP address the source and destination port and then lower lower level we put the Mac destination and the uh, source destination and we talked about the OSI model in detail I'm gonna reference it here guys so what happened here is if I have an IP address I know my IP address but I don't know the Mac we need a method to convert the IP address to a Mac right and that's what ARP is address resolution protocol it converts it finds the Mac address for a given IP address that's what it does right because we don't know the Mac address so we need to find it and because that operation is expensive we build this ARP table that's local to your machine and it caches that stuff and boy this stuff is onboarding guys as we start talking about virtual IP addresses and, and our proxying this becomes really critical to understand okay as a software engineer yeah uh, so yeah ARP table so let's talk about how the network frame looks like Assume I have this is my machine. It's an IP address, uh, 10002, and that's my MAC address. And I'm going to start shortening these things out. So I'm going to refer to my IP address as a number and the MAC address by the first two letters, to, just to simplify drawing, okay? And this is my destination server that I'm, I'm, I'm trying to connect to. And it's 10003, and this is the MAC address. 
And what happened here, it's listening on port 8080. Let's say this is a, an Express server or a Django server, right? Python server listening to some REST API, right? And I want to make a Git request, right? So you start building this Git request, request slash, right? And you know the, the, the destination port, right? So you put it there, right? And when I say put it there, essentially the HTTP client does that for you, right? Establish the TCP connection and does that for you. Establishing that, and then you put the destination, you know the IP address, let's go ahead and do that. And then you put a random port, that's your source port ID, okay? And then the source IP address, that's you, right? And here's what you know, this all get encapsulated, this all piece becomes one data blinded bits, right? And that gets shoved into uh, the, the destination MAC address. And then this is the source MAC address. Obviously, this is broken into multiple frames, guys. The whole thing doesn't fit into this. The, what will happen is this will be broken into multiple frames with the source and destination uh, MAC address tagged, right? So for simplicity, I'm going to convert this and I start referring to this, this. So the orange is the frames, right? This is layer two. This is layer four. And this is layer seven, okay? Sweet. Three is the IP address here and two is the IP address. Cool. I'm not gonna show the port because it's not it's not relevant, right? So that's the what what a frame looks like. That's a simple frame. Okay. Here's what I think here. So I didn't know the MAC address for for this machine. So I did a ARP request to find it out. So let's show an example on exactly how did I find that out. Okay. So assume this this is the configuration here. This is my machine. I am IP address two ten zero zero two. And I want to connect, right, to this web server, 10.0.0.5, right? And uh, gateway, GW is the gateway, essentially, wh where is the router? That's my router. That's the external IP of the router. That's the IP address. That's the MAC address of the router. Very important stuff, okay? And that's the other, some other machines. And these are the ARP tables. And if you notice, the ARP table has one entry, which is yourself. <laughs> Obviously, you know yourself, right? So IP2 is AA, IP3, BB, and so on, right? Got it? And I want to make a GET request to machine three, right? Actually, it's supposed to be five, but sure. Fixed it. That was quick. <laughs> All right. So what I want to do is I want to connect from my machine to this machine. I want to send a GET request, right? So I, I know the IP address, five. I know my MAC address, it's AA, right? I know my source IP address, it's two, right? So I want to now find out what's the destination MAC address so I can put it in a frame so I can send it so everybody can receive it, right? So 10.0.0.2 wants to connect to 10.0.0.5. So this could be a, just a UDP request, TCP, HTTP, anything, right? But in this case, it's an actual Git request, right? So machine two needs to find the MAC address of machine five. How do we do that? We do our ARP request. So we send an ARP request, everybody gets it, and what happens here is that, that machine will reply to the destination, the one who requested that ARP with its own MAC address. So, all right. So what will happen here is uh, machine two sends an ARP request. So that's the ARP request. So is that who has the IP address 10.0.0.5, okay? And what will happen is this machine will reply, says, hey, I have that IP address, here's my MAC address. The rest of the nodes will drop that request, essentially will just say, nah, that's not me, okay? And here's where things can get bad, guys, right? That request, if someone tries to impersonate someone else, they can actually fake it, right? It's like, hey, it's actually me. I have that IP address, and it's my MAC. And that's what's called R poisoning, but it's outside the... Uh, the scope of this video. So now I know, I know IP address, it's DD. So let's go ahead and send that, right? So we go ahead and send it, right? So very simple. So, that, so that's how ARP works essentially, right? Makes sense, very straightforward. And we know the MAC address, Do we know, no, we know the MAC address. I can put it in a frame, I can send it uh, across the network and I, I can essentially receive it. And when I do that, I update my ARP table. So next time I don't need to do an ARP request because it's expensive, right? 
anything that goes throughout the network and, and reaches a lot of people, a lot of nodes just to get that answer, it's expensive, right? So that's what I get, okay? All right, let's spice things a little bit. Let's assume I want to connect to machine that is outside my subnetwork, right? In this case, it is this Google, for example, 44222. It's a IP address X, okay? And this IP address is not within the subnet that that I'm I am in, which is 10002. So the moment my machine finds out that, what it does, it says, oh, okay. It says, wait a second. So I cannot communicate directly with that IP address because it's not in my subnet, right? But you know who can? My gateway can, right? And the gateway is whenever the sub, whenever the IP is outside the subnet, which is like a slash 24, or whatever the, the subnet mask is, if it's outside, then the machine automatically sends the packet to the gateway. And guess what? The gateway, I know the IP address of the gateway, it's one, but I do not know the MAC address of my gateway. So what do I do? I, I know the IP address of the gateway, and you, when you connect to your Wi-Fi, you see there is an entry called gateway, and that's your router most of the time, right? So my, my, my gateway is this guy. So I am going to do an ARP request for the first time, right, on my gateway, so 10.0.0. So I'm going to ask, all right, I'm going to connect. 10 0 we want to connect this. It's outside the subnet, so we're going to send it to the gateway. And who has the IP address this of this gateway? And so machine sent to, actually, my machine sends that ARP request. And we're going to get back a result that's called FF. And in this case, we get back the results, right? And once I get that results, right, I get that MAC address, I can stop building that thing so i can build my frame and i send it to the router and the router does an at right changes it's my ip address from two to its ip address and send it to the google server or whatever right to the outside network okay so that's where it gets really scary right that's how most man in the middle attacks happen right where and the uh, someone can pretend to be the network router and says hey by the way because you know how what's the ip address of the router so you start sending broadcast signals like hey guys i'm actually the router and here's my mac address so people think that this guy is the router and they start sending its data to the router and that's happened a lot in public wi-fi right it can easily happen a lot right and the moment it does that they can start sniffing using wireshark or whatever application to start sniffing the data not unless it's secure if it's secure if it's using tls right your gjbs then they cannot see anything right but yeah that that could they could do a man in the middle attack and sniff things and read things and do bad stuff. All right, summary. What do we learn? So we learned why we need our ARP. Everything in the network sent gets sent through MAC addresses, right? So we need those MAC addresses. But guess what? We know IP addresses. We do not know MAC addresses. So we need something to translate IP to MAC, and that's ARP. Okay. And then we talked about a little bit of our network frames, and then we talked about a little example. Hope you enjoyed this video, guys. We'll talk a little bit about uh, our poisoning, maybe in another video, right? But hope you enjoyed this video, right? I know I didn't dive deep into the ARP uh, protocol itself, right? Again, I'm a software engineer. I'm not an network engineer. I'm not an expert in these things, right? I care until about what the ARP request is, what it does. I leave the detailed our request and our protocol details to the expert or network engineering expert who who actually know better than i i rather stay on the software engineering side of it right but i thought this is a video that i, I should make and uh, just have it in the library of the videos that we talk about and uh, i thought of talking about it from a, from a software engineering point of view because uh, that's a lot of people ask me about that so hope you enjoyed this video gonna see you in the next one stay awesome